Uh, how's everyone doing today? Um, so I'm basically uh, doing part two of, my, of this Humankind campaign. Uh, a couple days ago, I started off, uh, you know, playing this game in its entirety for the first time. Uh, I did play a little bit of it uh, uh, when I first got the game, but I didn't really, you know, go through it as much uh, as I could have. Um, so I think it was a Wednesday, I believe. No, not Wednesday. Tuesday. <clears throat> no, I think I think it was Wednesday. Whatever. The point is, I did play. Uh, I did play this. Uh, uh, you know, or I'm trying to play it in its entirety for the first time uh, yesterday, and uh, I don't know anything about this game. Uh, I haven't done any research on it. I've just watched other streamers play it, and it, like I, like I said, mentioned before in the previous stream, it looked very interesting. So. I'm basically like, all right, let's try this game out and let's play it. And last time I left off, uh, I had to make a decision. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start the game. I had to make a decision between which uh, civilization I wanted to start off as, if I, uh, which ancient civilization I want to start off as. If I wanted to start off as an Egyptian, as the Egyptian culture, or if I wanted to do the Assyrian culture. Um, and yeah, I, I think I've made a choice on that end. I just want to make sure uh, that I've completed a turn for all of my uh, all of my army units, but uh, I will definitely reveal uh, I will definitely reveal what I picked uh, once this loading screen uh, finishes. But the artwork is amazing. Like I love the artwork for this game. I really do. It's 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 very beautiful. Um, yeah, and I, and I definitely think uh, I definitely think so far from my interactions with this game I think it can compete with Civ I don't know <clears throat> I don't know if it'll be able to overtake it but it'll definitely give a challenge to the civilization um, and for those who are curious about whether it's uh, uh, similar to Civ it is in some ways in some aspects there are some aspects of it that are you know fairly familiar um but there are differing aspects of this game that make it very unique unique enough to where it's not a carbon copy you know turn-based game where you're developing a civilization from scratch which you are doing but not quite in the same linear way that you did in civilization uh <clears throat> but yeah let me see One second. All right, here we are. All right, so I think for my armies, I'm pretty sure I did turns for all of them. Um. Ooh, should I go after this woolly? Uh, should I go after this deer? I did kind of skirt getting away from the woolly mammoths but i think deer is fair game I, I think i can go ahead and kill the deer which actually i'm gonna do that gonna be instantly resolved heck yeah only lost a little bit of strength let's see all right so they've done their turn excuse me all right let me go ahead All right. First thing I want to do before I choose the civilization that I'm going with, I want to build a city, or I at least want to have an outpost up. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a spot where I can uh, make an outpost. Obviously, with outposts, what you want to do, you want to be able to claim your territories first and foremost. Um, you you want to be able to expand your empires as quickly as possible. Let me see. Ooh, I think that would be a good spot lots of food lots of production this would also be another good spot decent food much more production but i think up here it'd be impossible for people to attack me ah i do like but i do like the extra production that you get here and there's only one way for people to attack me through this valley i am naturally protected yeah i think I think I'm gonna build it here. I'm on it. 
yeah, so in the next turn I should be able to build a city. Let's see. In the distance, a thin cord of smoke cuts up into clear blue skies, fire calling a few tribesmen. You run closer to the smell of cindered bark and burning pine growing stronger with each footfall. You spy dancing flames and suddenly you find yourselves on the edge of a settlement on fire. Much, much, many of the structures are ablaze, but even with the smoke and flames, you can see these abodes are marvels of craftsmanship. You're about to direct your men to put out the fires with loose soil when you see short shadowed figures running away. Use. They could become part of your tribe if you give chase now, but that would mean losing these secrets of construction. So I have a I have a chance of either adding more to my number in my army, or I could you know reduce the amount of research needed for city defense. Ooh. You know what? I think I'm gonna go with the city of defense, extinguish the fire. The reason I say that is because you know the quicker you can research technologies, uh, the faster you can progress through the game. So I think I'm gonna do that. I'll go ahead do that let's see all right let me go ahead and attack this deer and get some pretty sure they get food if i'm not mistaken i could be wrong i don't think they do no all right let me see go here to this army get some more food yeah it looks like i have a decent chunk of land i haven't even explored like the east side of this map so Let's see. And if I were to create a. Oh, there's a couple of places that do they give a lot of food, but the production is non existent. <laughs> Let's see. Where else? What's over there? going to try and explore more of this map right here. Yeah, this is very defensible. Like, it'd be very hard for people to attack me considering how mountainous and how much terrain or how much uh, mountain and plateau terrain there is in this territory. Okay, end of turn. Wonderful Vinicucci. Uh, okay, cool. So, what that mean? Okay, nothing for the uh, nothing for the culture. And again, like I said, I have made a decision on what culture I want to take up. <laughs> yeah, screw them. Yeah, I don't need them. Um, yeah, and I have made a decision, but I'm gonna once I have an outpost, then I'll pick the pick the culture that I want. Um, let me go ahead. Wait, can I? No. Hit them! Yay, victory is ours. <laughs> All right. I can't do anything with that sanctuary. Let me go ahead and... Yeah. Not as much food, but the production is... There we go. So now, as you can see, whenever you claim a territory, you see these little red lines right here. That's pretty much a territory that you've made a claim to. It's not completely yours until this becomes a city. Um, but this is going to become and this is going to become an actual outpost in three turns. For now, I've just created it, but it's not fully formed yet. Uh, so creating that takes up all the turns. Uh, let's see here. Go ahead, collect that. Okay, I'm gonna split up my tribes, see if I can cover more more ground. At least this way I can, you know, explore quicker. get more science baby let's see here let's see all right have I there's still okay there's still this guy over here god there's a lot of rivers 
I feel like there's a lot of areas that I could, you know, make good cities on. Look at the detail. Like, look at look at how cool that looks. Like, just building a city on top of this, you know, cliff right here. Or on, on top of this plateau. And then you have all this, like, marsh. Like, they did a really good job with the detail. Like, I really do like like this game cool bet I will definitely attack that bear he don't want the smoke alright who else alright Alright, so I finished up that turn. Go ahead. Okay. So I can defend my flag. Now uh now you have this option of doing the manual battle, so you can actually if I do manual battle, you can actually decide how you want to deploy your units. Um, and the battle so unlike Civ it's not just like an instant resolution type of thing you actually can set up your you know your army units on how and how they want to defend against the bear or how they want to attack I'm just gonna do an instant resolution for now um, because my side's stronger actually you know what I'm gonna do a manual battle deployment phase Deployment is key to maximizing the potential of your troops. You will progressively learn what parameters should be taken into account. And that for now, pay close attention to elevation and attack range. You will always strike much harder if attacking from a higher position. Yeah, that makes sense. Deploy in order to move a unit onto a different deployment tile, select the unit and then the destination tile. If you select the tile with the unit on it, the units will switch positions. When you are happy with your deployment, press the end deployment button. That makes perfect sense. So, all right, and then I can deploy him over there. Actually, no, let me, yeah, there we go. That should work. And I'm gonna go ahead. All right, cool, cool, cool. Oh, this is cool. You can actually decide on how you want to go about. For the oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I think I may have messed that up. Did I give the bear the high ground? Wow. Should have just insta resolved this. Alright. That's fine. Lesson learned. <laughs> Lesson learned. This way. Alright, let me go ahead, attack this deer. I'm just gonna just gonna instantly resolve. Victory! Alright, keep going, keep going. Oh, that takes up all. Okay, alright. I didn't know that. Let's see what else. Guess I can continue going that way. Alright, where who else needs to turn or go? Get them. And anytime you ransack a uh, sanctuary, uh, you basically get like resources and stuff. If it's a brown lie down, if it's black, fight back. I mean it was a black bear. Like hold on, I don't know if you could see it. Where where is the bear?
I can't I can't even show you the bear. Huh, that's weird. That's fine, whatever. Let me go ahead and attack more sanctuaries. Uh, oh yes, uh, like I uh, mentioned before, uh, I did decide on what culture I wanted to take. Um, and luckily, the Assyrians are still available, and I'm going to go with the Assyrians. That's right. I'm an ass, man. <laughs> um, just to see one uh, plus one land movement strength, uh, speed on unit, plus five combat strength bonus when ransacking on army. Uh, to influence 10 district fortification plus one combat strength and combat for units in or adjacent interesting okay yeah I'm a, I'm a adopt and I love being able to forcibly annex that is awesome yep and there you go that's the Assyrian clothing style yep Ah, oh, the challenges of there a young you go. civilization. It's hard keeping up with the neighbors when they have the wheel and you don't. Humankind learns quickly that everyone can be so beautiful. If you're terrified of wild animals, you can grow lentils or catch fish. Tribes settle towns. Towns develop markets, and markets begin the exchange of goods, services, and most important, rumors and hearsay. I love so that now, he's just like hiding we beneath. As the warlike Assyrians. You're not going to be a very nice neighbor, are you? Nope. <laughs> nah, man. I, I ain't with that nice life. Nomadic tribe. The Nubians. Alright, cool. Battle is currently underway. I'm just going to retreat. Just attack. I'm just gonna see what happens. If I die, I die, whatever. I'll ask the unit. Oh no! Yep. I lost two units. Next time I'll just auto resolve those battles. Lesson learned. I'll leave the black bears alone. <laughs> no, no. Let's see. Keep going. Ooh, a woolly! Should I attack the woolly or should I leave the woolly mammoth alone? I wonder. We both have equal strength. Actually, I'll just leave it alone. I will not attack the mammoth. Let me go ahead. Let me see if I can recuperate this guy's health. Can I? I can't make this into a city yet. Okay. That makes perfect sense. Right. God, look at all this defensible territory. Like, good luck trying to attack me. This is gonna be insane. Ooh. Oh, well, that's cool. I didn't get anything from it. Let's go. But that's cool. Come over here. So luckily, because I am expansionist, all my army units got like uh, got increased movement speed, which is very key, especially if I'm trying to flesh out more land. Interesting, interesting. I didn't know those existed, but that's cool. That is so cool. By building an outpost, claiming territory is this easy. The trick, of course, is keeping it. Oh, this is cool. Alright, let me go ahead and turn this into a city. There you go. So now that I turned it into a city, as you can see, the little 
dotted lines became actual red lines. So this is my actual territory. Um, and I don't know if you guys noticed this, but right here, this is called the city cap. And basically I can only have two cities at a time. Um, so if I wanted to make another city, first I'd have to make that, I'd have to make the territory that I want to claim into an outpost, then I have to turn it into a city. However, you can't just make cities like you can in, uh, in a, a civilization. Like you have to be able to create a lot of outposts that you can attach to your territories and then make cities every now and then. Now there are technologies that can help you increase the city cap so you can make more cities in the long run, but for the uh, but for the most part you, you don't want to be you don't you're not gonna be able to make like a whole bunch of cities like right then and there um, so now that I've created a city now I can see how much food I'm making how much industry how much money how much science um, so and uh, anytime you want to use your uh, your civilization's power it's this button right here. I haven't encountered any other civilizations yet, so I can't really use this button. But basically, I can target a specific territory of another empire and bring it under my banner. And that would expand my territory. So it's a nice, easy way to, uh, you know, claim territory. I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. Um, especially if, if uh, that person, if that civilization has territories that I want and will give me a lot of resources and whatnot. Um, but yeah, but right here, these are going to be like the four main resources that I'm going to be generating. Food, industry, money, and science. It's the same as with civilization. Um, I don't know which is the most important uh, in humankind. Like with Civ, obviously you can you can have your argument depending on what civilization you're picking. Like it, it would be industry or it would be production or it would be science, you know, whatever the case may be. But... In humankind, you really don't know. Like you're free to play how you want to play, which is the beauty of this game. Um, also, you're never allowed to have a like, city idle, which again is the same as if you never have a city idle in terms of production. Um, what I am going to do, ooh, there's silk, silk in my territory. Let's see. I want to see if I can make outpost that is a lot of production and food there it would take me three turns to get there let me see if there's another area where I can make another outpost And the good thing about this game is it's just a decent place for you, decent places for you to go ahead and make your outpost. You know, this way you're not sitting there being like, oh yeah, which way, which one do I gotta, you know, go towards to make a, to get a good outpost? Like right now in this area, I haven't really encountered any areas that would give me, you know, good production and good uh, food. All of this right here seems like a pretty decent area. 11. Yeah, like 11. You know what? Yeah, I think, I think I'm gonna make an outpost here. Yeah, why not? There you go. And it's gonna become an actual outpost in four turns. But for now, right now my territory consists of this city right here and this outpost, which I can then connect to the city so whatever resources my city has, this outpost will get to use as well, and vice versa. Um, but yeah, I, I think uh, I think I'm going to try and accumulate as many resources as I can. Like this outpost has another silk resource, uh, also has incense as well. Uh, so yeah, it's it's decently abundant, and I'm gonna try and uh, try and claim territory around this area as well. Uh, so this way I can claim the dyes here. Alright, so I need, in order to make another outpost, I'm going to need 30 influence. So it's probably going to take me a few turns, uh, probably about like 7 turns to get that influence. Um, in the meantime, I can also go here to the technology screen and decide on, you know, what I want to research. 
Uh, so. I think with domestication, if I can get access to horses and, you know, be able to make animal barns, increase my food production, and have my unique army unit, the Syrian Raiders, who move really fast and are pretty strong. Uh, and then I can parlay that into wheels, which will create roads along my empire, which makes it easier to traverse. Uh, but for now, I think I'm going to go with domestication. I don't know how I'm going to play this out in the long run, but for now, I know domestication is the one thing I do want. Um, I might go calendar next only because it will grant me the artisan's quarter and allow me to create a granary. Um, so I can do that as well. All right. Also, there's a slight difference. Um, so basically, in Civilization, you could create zones. Um, I shouldn't say too much of a difference. Like, you can create specific zones that would... Like, if I wanted to create a farmer's quarter... that if I wanted to create a maker's quarter I could create a maker's quarter right here and I'll create a, a industrial zone basically right here and I think a few other tiles surrounding it will be influenced by it as well um, it's gonna take my city six turns to make it so yeah it's definitely gonna take a little bit of time but oh the other thing I wanted to show you is that once you create a district you can also focus on creating infrastructure within your city to like you know increase oh thank you so much thank you so much the average casual for following me thank you so much man for sure um but yeah the infrastructure it's basically like for example the pottery workshop it'll increase the amount of influence i gain uh in this particular city so like plus four influence on the main plaza essentially in the city uh i can create that after i make the industrial zone so that'll that'll boost the influence that I gain. And honestly, in this game, influence is very important because what it does, it allows me to expand my territories quicker. It allows me to, you know, claim wonders. It allows me to, you know, uh, have certain civics passed. Um, it, it it helps a lot. It's it's very it's very useful for sure. Um, let's see what else. Okay, this guy right here. Yeah, I can't claim any territory yet. So I'm gonna, just going to keep exploring. Ooh, coastal water, coral yeah. reefs. I'm going to save the reefs, boy. It's, uh, so I am, I'm still discovering what this game does and doesn't do. Um, I will definitely recommend, like, worth trying it out yourself. Uh, it is similar to Civ in some aspects. and other aspects, it's not. Like, for example, you know, trying to go up this plateau normally in Civ, you could just take this guy... And move it up here but if I try to do that it's gonna you see it's gonna circumvent me all the way around like I actually have to go you know through this area and then up the ledge so there's like certain certain little you know quality of life things that are like very different from you know what you're used to in Civ but I would yeah so basically when I found when I found the city uh, like whatever whatever territory uh, I had as an outpost. Once I create a city, I gain that entire territory to myself. Um, once this once this outpost uh, comes online, once it once it's an actual outpost, I can attach this outpost to the city, and this red line will extend to all of this squiggly line stuff. So then my territory will encompass all of this so far. Um, and then the more territory I claim, eventually I can claim more and more and more land right here. Uh, so it's going to take time because like the more outposts you make, the greater the cost. So like, you know, right now it may take me 30 influence to create another outpost. Next time it may cost me 100 influence. So it just it takes time. So that's why getting gaining influence is very, very important um, early game. So you can, you know, have as much territory claimed as possible. Because you will find other civilizations and they will fight for the same territories that you're claiming. Um, that will for sure happen. Let's see. 
I'm just gonna keep moving, keep moving. I'm not gonna attack the woolly. I know I've heard some people demand that I save the woolies, so I will not attack a woolly mammoth, even though they do provide food. I'm gonna go ahead, sack that sanctuary. What else? Who else do I need to go to? I really wanna know what this lair is. Like, I. I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna go hard into paint, I'm just gonna explore it a little. Probably gonna need some backup. Oh, uh, what else? Okay, I still need one more turn. Oh! I could attack the deer, get some more food that way. Just gonna auto resolve. Victory is mine! Heck yeah. Alright. So I think that should be the end of my turns. Okay, let me go ahead. Oh, I can't heal him yet. Actually... Yeah, so also when you want to heal up your armies, you actually have to be within your territory. Otherwise, they won't really heal. So if your army is weak like this, if your hunting party is weak like this guy is, uh, like this party is, um, definitely bring them back to your territory so they can heal up and you can send them out again. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and I guess I can have them explore. Or I could just have them chill. Yeah, I should have just have them chilled in there. Whatever, it's fine. No big deal. Okay, so they do gain even if it's outpost. Alright, cool, 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 cool. Look at all these animals running away from me. Yeah, they don't want this work. <laughs> they don't want this work. Not at all. Uh, let's see. Come over here. Yeah, I don't think I should attack this lair. Actually, can I attack it? Alright, I guess I could clear it. That works. Alright, let me see. I'm gonna keep exploring the southern portion of this map. Oh, apparently there is another civilization here. Huh. Hold on. I want to see if I can cheese it. <laughs> I don't think... Hold on. Target another Empire's outpost or administrative center with an army to forcibly add a tier. Okay, so I have to see the administrative center. So basically, every time there's a... Hold on. Anytime there's an outpost, the middle part of the outpost is called the administrative center, um, especially once you attach it to a city. Yeah, that's still going to take me three turns. Um, I don't know the civilization. I haven't met with them in person. Um, but once I do find their... Uh, ooh, okay. Can I do this? Oh, I need money. Okay. Okay, okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. Let me go ahead and, uh... Okay, that's interesting. So now I know. I need money to also, you know, expand. That makes sense. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Let me just buy your territory and bring you into my empire. Oh yeah, I'm definitely killing this bear. I'm gonna avenge my fallen comrades. Alright, end the turn. Go ahead. Alright, I sacked the lair. So these are the Babylonians. It can only be an advantage to have a neighbor as smart as you are. Oh, so they okay, so once they So once they uh, accumulate the you know, the outpost into uh Well actually I think they made it into their capital city. Okay, so that was gonna I could have knocked the Babylonians out early in the game if I had enough money. <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh, that's funny. Um, okay, so once you once you interact with the civilization, or once you meet them for the first time, you can uh, open up... You can basically click on them and open up the uh, diplomacy map, or diplomacy table, um, so we can introduce ourselves. A thousand welcomes. 
So right now we're just, you know, getting to know one another. I hope you are one who keeps their word. How do you do? So they're impulsive and they're introvert. So basically they don't want to interact with too many civilizations. Um, their strengths, they research science pretty fast. And they build pretty quickly. Interesting. And they will not accede to demands. Okay, interesting. Now what we could do is do some treaties. Let's see. You can always trespass. Yeah, and I'm not worried about that. We can trade luxury resources. We could propose that. The world is full of new oh, they refused. Okay, not. cool. Hear my proposal. No, not acceptable. Wow. If it works for you. Ah, all right, whatever. I tried. Cool. No big deal. All right. Seems like all the other civilizations are becoming or gaining their culture. Okay. So looks like I can't do anything with them yet, um, which I guess is fair game, since we just met. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and get out of their territory. But it looks like I can't... This is pretty much where I'm drawing the mouse right here. Is pretty much the extent of my empire. Or at least the extent of how much territory I can claim. Uh, otherwise, if I try to go any lower, it's going to, you know, cause the issues against the Babylonians. And I don't know how strong their army is. So, definitely don't want that. Oh, uh, you know what? Oh, I could have attacked. Whatever. That's fine. No big deal. No biggie. Actually, I haven't explored this area right here. Let's see. Here we go ahead. If I had enough money, I could theoretically claim their outpost, but I don't, which kind of sucks. I just want to do it for the hilarity of it. <laughs> so you're like, oh, you thought you had this outpost, psych. I'm going to try and heal up my army. Peoples. Um... Alright, I'm going to go ahead and end the turn here. Let's see. Two idle armies. News from the borders. Do something clever today. Sign this treaty. I must think, though I am inclined. I offered to this say like yes. a turn ago. What the hell? And you guys said no. And now you want to? Okay. You know what? I'm gonna counter. I'm gonna gain a little bit of money from them. Sweeten the proposal. Ah, <laughs> they said no. <laughs> Sorry, you're not getting out of this that easily. That's fine. That's whatever. No big deal. No biggie. Go ahead and Off we go. Over this way. Charge. Oh, I can't even attack the deer. That's so strange. They're on they're Yeah, I can I should be able to attack them. Yeah, okay. Let's say. Okay. Cool. Five gold, heck yeah. Alright, what else? Keep going. sense god look at the detail this is amazing do I have enough to claim a territory I don't know why they're letting me claim a territory when I clearly don't have it that's fine tis okay
I don't have any population in my city right now. Um, but yeah, once I start gaining populations, there's gonna be like people here that show up. I can shift them around pretty easily, which is very, very convenient. A little bit more convenient than uh, than Civ, Civ Six. And yes, they were driving a hard bargain, which kind of sucks. Because I was trying to see if I can get a little bit of gold so I could claim their outpost. But that's okay. That's okay. My main concern is just, you know, exploring as much as I can. Yeah. Who else? Okay. Oops. Then I mean to go into their... That's okay. That's fine. No big. A city means shelter for those who need it. A place to store food. Pens for the pigs. It may not be glorious, but it beats sleeping under trees. Indeed it does, my guy. Indeed it does. What's this? Oh, is this a... Oh, that's the wonder. Okay, that makes sense. So you keep going, keep going. Hopefully I don't encounter another civilization here. Hopefully there's some good areas for me to claim my territory. Oh, nice. More forest, heck yeah. Interesting, interesting. Again, I just like the fact that it's very realistic. Like, you can actually, you know, go up and down, but you have to go around instead of just going up and down like in Civ. Like, I really enjoy the realism of this game. Probably even more so than Civ's. And I know I haven't even explored, like, the best parts of this game. Actually, let me see. Own eight territories. So right now I only have one. That's okay. Um, and also with this particular chart in order to advance to like the classical era I need seven stars you can you don't have to immediately advance to the classical era once you gain these seven stars you can choose to collect all 21 stars um, basically there's just a star for each type there's expansionist stars there's an aesthet star there's a builder star there's an agrarian star merchant scientist and military star uh, so, you know, there are, there are ways for you to, uh, do that, or pretty much you can do that before you advance. Obviously, you don't want to stay in one era too long, um, because then other souls will pass you by in technology. So you kind of want to, excuse me, you kind of want to advance to an era as quickly as you can, if possible, from at least from what this game is telling me. Can I attach? Yeah, I should be able to attach, right? Hold on. Yeah, so once this is an actual outpost, I can... Hold on. Yeah. Once I attach it... Oh, I need 45. Okay. Oh, that sucks. See, that's the thing with influence. In order to expand my territory, I need influence both to attach the city to my... Uh, attach the outpost to my city. And I need influence to, you know, put more outposts to gain more... Uh, territory so it can definitely be a long long run in order to you know get to that level cool 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 I'm not worried about grievances yet let's see a battle Bloody is... and smelly, aren't they? history may be changed by battle huh interesting. but that doesn't mean they're enjoyable interesting Oh, they're actually going to fight me. I don't know why they're going to fight me. I, I did nothing to them. Let me... Come over here. Hmm. Could manual battle this. 
Because I'm on higher ground, so it'd be harder for them to attack me. They can try. Right. Yeah, they can try. It'd be hard. I attack them. You know, what? I'm gonna just defend. Huh. Trying to see if there's a way. Yeah, let's defend. I'm gonna lose this battle, aren't I? Huh. Well, this sucks. Oh. Did we win? Oh, we won! Oh, damn. Okay, alright. Bet, bet, bet. Somehow we won. Interesting. All right, well, let's see. Oh, I can't propose anything for another, okay. Huh, they just wanna fight me for no reason? All right. Looks like I'll prepare to beat down this guy. I think I can make a city around here somewhere. Yeah, if I can make a city around here, have access to the harbor, that'd be pretty clutch. For sure. I did have the high ground. Yeah, I did. I think that's probably why I won that battle, technically, I guess, if that makes sense, even though I have lower health. Um, let's see here. I wonder if I could get back to my territory. Oh, wow, that's going to take me five turns. Holy crap. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, I like it, but at the same time, it can be somewhat cumbersome in terms of navigating. Especially if you have a lot of plateaus. Yeah, I need more influence. That's okay. That is okay. They have more military units. I'm Off not gonna, go. I'm not gonna mess with them. I'm in no position to do so. A first emblematic quarter. Cool, it's a cool, symbol cool. of power, and a lasting memory of this era. Go ahead, be smug. Heck yeah, I'm smug. That's right. That's right. All right. So you see, once I gain a population, I can choose like if I wanted to do more money. I can put them there. I, if I want to do more science, I can drop them there. If I want to do more industry, I could put them there. But I think it's more important to gain food right now so I could quickly uh, gain a higher population. I could put it in the money and try and increase the amount of money that I get. But I think as the population grows, that will naturally occur anyway. Um, let's see. 
Oh, also, this is the society thing, so this allows you to establish like certain civics. Uh, I haven't unlocked any civics, so I can't show you that particular screen, but basically this shows you like, you know, the type of culture that this particular territory is a part of. And right now this will be converted to my culture pretty within the next couple turns. So, so now that I've created, so as you can see, once I've uh, created the maker's quarter, this entire area is going to be dedicated dedicated to uh, production. Um, I could create another infrastructure area, or I could uh, um, or I could create a a, a dunu, which allows me to fortify my surroundings. So, like, it's basically a fort, essentially. So I could I could drop a fort on my territories, which will allow me to defend pretty well. So like I could place a fort here and basically make sure my city is well protected, uh, and it would give me two influence. Uh, or I could choose to, you know, create a farming farming area that'll allow me to. Uh, allow me to gain more food although it seems like this city is gonna be more of like a production type of city than anything um, yeah so I think what I can do I can increase the infrastructure because I do need to get more influence pretty quickly uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that We could combine forces. If they're gonna attack us willy nilly, we can at least combine forces and make give them, you know, time to think about it. And pause. This will reduce the amount of territory that I can discover, but at this point, I mean this pretty this is gonna be harder for me to go down and explore more territory. Uh, so for now, I'm just going to, you know, consolidate my armies as much as I can. And also, I'm probably going to try and help them recover their, Let's you go. know, their health and whatnot. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. It definitely, definitely helps a lot. For sure. Off we go. Let's go. Let me see what else I can do. Yeah, I think I'm going to combine these two armies as well. Alright, let me go ahead. Yeah, being able to create a city here would be lovely. But as you can see, if I want to create cities in like really good places, it costs more influence to do so. That's why I say influence is very important when you're trying to establish you know trying to get a lot of territory and, and i'm slowly learning so i think next time i play next uh next campaign that i have i'll probably focus more on influence and whatnot so i could you know expand my territories much quicker uh but for now i'm just going to you know do this playthrough and see you know see what i can do and what i can't do I could found an outpost there, and actually, that's, that's probably a pretty good spot too. Yeah, lots of food, lots of production. You know, what? yeah, I think I'm gonna establish an outpost there. Yeah, there's certain spots where like you can get lucky with uh, good city placement, with like good food, good production, and it doesn't cost that much to establish an outpost. If I can establish an outpost here, I have a pretty solid, you know, area right here to create my empire. Are they chasing me? I really hope they don't chase me down. I don't think it's necessary. I'm just a wee little baby. What time is it? Hold on one second, guys. Let me just see what time it is. Yeah, I think uh, I think I'm gonna stream for a few more minutes and then I'm gonna call it a call it a day here. 
but yeah, I'm, and I apologize if I'm not talking as much or I'm not being as informative. Like, I'm still learning things about the game. So, like, it, if I have this dumbstruck look on my face, it's literally me just, like, learning how this game operates and whatnot. So I really do apologize. Um, hopefully, I do have a better understanding of this game um, in due time. Yeah, so like I could really consolidate this into like one huge army um, and just have them roam around and protect my territories. Uh, yeah, so I can go ahead and do that. Ooh, that's another good spot to form an outpost, but I think getting the extra production will help immensely. Yeah, see? So now I have a little bit more territory. It's a pretty decent chunk of territory. I like it. I like it. It'll take like five turns for it to become an outpost. I am retreating. Bye. Your empire is an enigma. Let's see. So basically, it's haha. <laughs> yeah, right. Good luck. Actually, let me see how much. Could I demand that? No. I wonder if. You've gone too far this time. Make it right. So basically, whatever demands I make, uh, if they refuse it, my war support will go up. So basically, allow me to justify going to war against them. Obviously, I don't want to go to war against them, but you know, I wouldn't have my people like be like, "Hey, what you going to war for?" Yeah, that's basically that's basically how that would operate. Um, let me see. One second. Let's see, understood. Can I make more? Hold on. The trust is deteriorating. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I'll say. I mean, hey, I'm trying to offer treaties and stuff, and they're the ones just straight. Yeah, I'm not gonna fight. Yeah, they like like three of them against me. Like, no, I'm not gonna fight them. Get out of your mind. Cool. I'm not paying them. They can suck all the balls if they think I'm gonna pay them. Yeah, since you want to make huge armies, I can also make a huge army. Over this way. Let's see. Excellent, excellent. Right. Now I think I can create a fort to, you know, protect my territory. Or if there's a good spot to. So basically, I can probably create a fort here to, or if they try to attack my city, I can also create a fort here. Yeah. 
Yep. Gonna create a fort to protect my city. Yeah, once and once I gain enough uh, influence, I can attach this outpost to my city and ensure it stays, you know, becomes an actual part of my territory. Let's see. Empire Foundation, by what right do we rule? Show the details. So yeah, this is what I was talking about in terms of the civics screen. Um, so basically, it's like, it's kind of like a talent tree and, uh, you know, something like Warcraft, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, basically, you can choose to be more more towards collectivism or more towards individualism. Um, you have like different, you know, sliders essentially indicating what your ruling style is and how your relationship is with like other civilizations. You can choose to be more, take a more world view, or you can choose to have more of like a, let's focus on our home uh, type of view. You can be more authoritative or you can be more liberal in your, you know, choices. You can side more towards tradition or push more towards progress. Um, and then on top of that, like you have specific choices that you can pick. Um, so like, for example, the founding myth is by what right do we rule? Uh, so do we claim a natural right? Claiming inherent dominion over the land and beasts. So that'll give us more influence or divine mandate, uh, which will give us faith, which will allow us to establish religions and stuff. I'm more about, you know, natural right and going more towards progress. I'm going to enact that particular right. Oh, I only have, okay, I only have 10 influence. That makes sense. Once I gain, again, like I said, that's the problem. You got to have a lot of influence. Otherwise, there's a lot of stuff that you can't do if you have a low amount. But once I get enough, I'm just going to go with the natural right. And that'll allow me to gain more and more influence as the game progresses. Uh, yeah, I don't know why they're chasing me so hard. Like, dude, I don't want to fight y'all. <laughs> Follow me. Yeah. Come over here. Like, I don't understand your zest for fighting me. Uh -huh. I don't think I've earned a single star yet. <laughs> Yeah, with normal, this takes a lot, uh, a lot more time than it does with, uh, you know, the last game I played. Because I think that was like an easy tutorial mode st style of game. Alright, I'm going to end the turn here. Cool, cool, cool. Well, there's actually two civics I can enact. Let's see, legitimacy, customary laws, what style of laws does the empire use? So I could do more towards customary laws or have more codified laws. Basically, laws will be debated, classified, and codified. Um, so it'll reduce the amount of costs needed to absorb a city or to attach an outpost, which will be very important. Or I could do customary laws, which will reduce the amount needed to create an outpost. I'm gonna leave this question aside for now, but for the founding myths one, I'm gonna do the five plus five influence. Why was this even a question? Let's keep it simple. Yeah. We've been here. It's our place. This is our place. Heck yeah. But yeah, that's that, that's basically how I'm leaning towards more towards uh, progress. So like, and when you lean more and more towards a specific, you know, slider, it'll provide bonuses based off of uh, what you're leaning towards. Um, so yeah, so because of that choice, now I'm gaining, now my influence is starting to pick up. I'm starting to gain 14 influence a turn, which will allow me to attach this outpost quicker. And then once I have this outpost attached, you know, my influence will go up even more. So it, it, it's a slow pace, but it's slowly starting to snowball. For sure. Um, trying to see what else. I found a curiosity. Heck yeah, 20 gold. Holla at you, boy. Ooh, I know what I could do. <laughs> oh, I could be a, I could be a huge frick here. Um, but I think I have to wait for the next turn. Unless I could have him go this way. 
I think I think I'm gonna end off by trying to by trying to steal this specific territory. I will definitely do that for sure. It'll be pretty funny. Why are these, bro? Leave me alone. I do not want to fight you. Like I'd rather fight this woolly than fight y'all. As your horizons widen, your army is growing locked up with your ambitions. Now with military power spread over several regiments, it is time to decide the nature of your soldiers who compose your army. Show detail. So I can choose to conscript my warriors or have professional soldiers. Um, if I do professional soldiers, it will increase the combat strength of my units, which will be very useful. Um, if I do conscripts, it will reduce the amount needed to you know, build them. Um, Again, I'm gonna leave this question for a later time. Uh, but I think most importantly, I'm gonna try and steal this outpost from them, which would be hilarious. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be good. This is gonna be good. Can I? I actually have to be, oh, okay. This is gonna be interesting. to turn here okay so I've investigated domestication cool cool, cool. Right. I don't have horses in my territory which kind of suck but that's okay I don't think he does either yeah I don't look like he does that's okay that's fine If I can steal this territory, that would be the funniest thing. I really want to steal it. <laughs> this would be dumb as hell. I could get away with it. Alright, but because I've researched that, now i got to figure out what I need, what I want to research next. Um, it's going to take me a while to research wheel. I think I'm going to research calendar in order to... Uh, extract resources and allow me to you know build a granary which will increase the food production so I think I'm gonna do that Let's see. this is gonna take forever to get there Jesus Looks like they're not chasing me anymore, which thank God. Let's go. Yeah, if I can steal their territory, I'll end off on that note, but I gotta get there first. Because I have enough money, I think, to do so. Oh, wait, I can also attach. So I can attach Scythe. Yep. See, once I attach it, now it's officially part of my territory. Which is on... Yeah, I can build... I can build an animal barn since I don't have access to horses yet. Which is, again, that's fine. Once I do, though, I'll be able to build that particular infrastructure. buy this I am about to confirm this annexation target <laughs> uh, this is gonna be dumb but I actually get away with this <laughs> oh crap no 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 please don't fight me please don't fight me I don't want to fight you I'm starting to expand my territories. So that's good. Let's see. Open. Yeah, I'm about to retreat. You y'all can have that. 
perfect. You know what, since they want the smoke, I'm gonna I'm gonna give them what they want. I should probably heal my armies up first, but I'm gonna give them what they want, since you know they want that smoke. Oh shit. What do we do? End turn. Excellent. Cool. Y'all really need to I literally what? Okay. Whatever, just resolve it. I don't care. Yeah, you killed my unit. There's nothing I could have done about that. That's fine. That's fine. This is fine. Everything's fine. You know, oh, since we're since we're in the Yeah. Interesting. So I lost two units, they only lost one. Interesting. Let's see. I wonder if I can stay here. Hold on. Can I? Yeah, did I not claim this? I fucking yeah, I claimed this. Did I not? We gonna take time to for the claim to go through. That's okay. Yeah, I'm gonna hold the station. I'm gonna see what happens. One idle city. All right. Plazas. Garrisons can also serve as spawn points too. Yeah, that makes sense. I could create new units. I can't create the raiders yet because I don't have horses. Um, what I can do is create more forts to protect my territories. Could battle them, manually battle them. Or I could retreat. But I'm curious to see if this actually works. Yeah, give me that gold. Yay, yay. Okay, cool. More population. Heck yeah. Let me go ahead and kill this deer. Instantly resolve. Did that not do anything? Oh, do I have to actually stay there and... Oh, that sucks. Okay. Oh, I actually have to be there. Okay, alright, 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 alright. Actually, I'm gonna just stay here.
Oh, and also see that if you build an outpost near your borders, it costs less than if you're building it out of your... Okay, that makes perfect sense. You see, guys, I'm slowly but surely learning more and more about this game. I could build another outpost there. Oh, and I can also show the civics. So for legitimacy, I can reduce the cost of outposts. Because hmm. I do want to have codified laws, but... I don't want to miss out on the because I can half my create outpost cost. <laughs> yeah, I wish it was that easy to just annex. That would have been funny as hell. But I think I actually have to stay on the land and you know forcibly annex it. Um, but I think I'm gonna do the codified laws and reduce the outpost cost just imagine. and the absorb city Once cost. You writing, you can literally and then the for the in. army composition. I can increase the combat strength on my units, so it'll be harder to beat. But if I do conscripts, I can create more of them. Which I think, in the long run, being able to produce more units will be uh, better for me. But at the same time, having stronger armies would also benefit me as well. So I think I'm going to do it professional soldiers. It does seem soldiers. logical that people shouldn't have to do a job unless they want to. Interesting. All right. Well, I think on this note, guys, I'm going to end it here. Uh, there's a lot for me to think about. I've had to consolidate my armies. Yeah, into like one. One major army, I think. Where is my other unit? I know they're here somewhere. Whatever. Yeah, I've had to consolidate them all. Um, I might have to create more military units. Um, but for now, I'm going to leave it as is. I'm going to see if I can try and claim Petra again and absorb it into my uh, is absorb it into my empire which I'm sure will not piss off the Babylonians at all. <laughs> oh, that's right. I did I did mention that I was going to rename the city. And uh, I think I think I'm going to rename the city. Hmm, what do you guys think? What should I name the city? Should I name it Nuchi, Kali, Leah? What, what should I name it? Or should I... Uh... You know what? I think I know what I'm going to do. Kalan. Kali and Shally. Yeah, I'm going to combine the two. Or Shalon, yeah. Kali and Shalon. I'm going to combine the two. I do owe Leah. You know what? Yeah, I'm naming it Leah. <laughs> Leah it is. Leah, you are officially a city. Let me see if I can attach. Oh, I need 96 more influence. Okay, that's fine. All right, I think I'm going to end it here, guys. Uh, I will be on probably tomorrow. Actually, no, tomorrow is CK3 streaming. So I'll probably be streaming CK3. Uh, and then, uh, I'll probably go back to humankind on Saturday and that'll probably be the last time I stream until I come back from my vacation on, in Colorado. But thank you everybody for watching this. Um, and I apologize if the quality was a little poor. I think I have too many windows up on my, on my laptop. So if you guys are watching the stream and it's a little poor quality, 
Again, I apologize. I'll, I'll do a better job of that. But for now, uh, I'm going to sign off. Uh, and thank you guys for watching me. Uh, I will talk to you guys later um, on my next stream, which is tomorrow. Uh, same time, 7, 8. Yeah, I don't even know the time. But I'll probably do one of those times. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.